Okay, there you go. And today we'll be um, talking about your chapter 9. It's all about the census. Can you see the presentation? Yes, okay. but, yes, sir. There you go. That's awesome. So we'll be starting here. Uh, we are going to learn first about your census. Okay, anyone here can define or can tell me what is the difference between your sense and sensation or uh, perception as well? So what do you think is the meaning of the word sensation? Anyone from the class? Any volunteer? Oh, there you go, Ryan. To feel something, sir. To feel something. Okay. Fernandez, yung last name mo, no? Okay. Now, uh, that is the, uh, that is the, his different definition of um, sensation. How about perception? What do you think is the meaning of the word perception? Yes. Um, Ibasan, Charlene. Conscious awareness, Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell it again? Um, Charlene, you're there? Conscious awareness, please. Okay, there you go. Uh, it's also conscious awareness. Okay, so here, if we're going to say sensation, it is actually the process initiated by um, stimulating your sensory receptors while your perception it is your conscious awareness of the stimuli. We also have what we call the sense. If we say sense, it is the ability um, to perceive um, the stimuli. And we have our um, sensory receptors, as you can see here in our, um, in our presentation. These are what we call the sensory uh, receptors. They are the nerve endings that respond um, to stimuli by developing action potentials. Okay, so sometimes uh, sensation and perception, they are actually separate processes, but are very closely related to one another. Um, again, if we say sensation, this is the process by which we receive the information uh, from the environment. And then your perception, this is the process of selecting and identifying the information from the environment, okay? And here, let's move to the next. Uh, you can follow through with your book. This one is already on page uh, 238. So as you can see here, this is our sense and it is subdivided into two. We have what we call your general senses and here we have your special senses, okay? now. In general senses, it is again uh, subdivided into two categories. We have your somatic and we also have your visceral, okay? Now, let's talk first about your somatic. If we say uh, somatic, it usually provides information about the body and also the environment. It is usually the touch, the pressure, the pain, temperature, and your pro, uh, proprioception. Well, if we say visceral here, uh, visceral has something to do with the information in our internal organs, okay? Primarily, this one um, usually detects your pain and also the pressure that is under your visceral, okay? Now, let's go here to your special senses. Uh, this one, this is the use of our... Um, days of our senses, the sense of hearing, smelling, um, balance, vision, and the likes. Okay, so these are your type of senses where you can actually see this one also in our book. Now let's go here, the types of receptors. Okay, so if you're going to see here, uh, I have um, put uh, emphasis here. So we have your um, mechanoreceptor here, the first one. We also have your uh, photoreceptor, your thermoreceptor, 
uh, nociceptor and also here your um, chemoreceptor. Okay, so if we say uh, mechanoreceptor, it has something to do with your uh, detection of movement. Okay, from the word mechano. Okay, mechanoreceptor, this one will detect a movement like the touch, pressure, vibration, um, if you're going to do some bending and also um, stretching that is under your mechanoreceptor. Next one is what we have your chemoreceptor here. Uh, on this part, this is um, stimulated by the chemicals. Okay, example of this one is we can actually uh, detect the odors, okay? We also have your uh, photo uh, receptor here. Uh, your photo receptor, this one, it can actually uh, detect the light. While uh, thermal receptor, from the word itself, thermo, it has something to do with the temperature changes. And here, your nociceptor, it is um, usually or primarily for pain, your nociceptors. Okay, your chemoreceptor is actually, we can also um, put this one on taste. It's because when we, uh, when we taste food, you know, it also has your chemicals and we can actually detect that one. So again, your types of receptors, we have your mechanoreceptor, chemoreceptor, your photoreceptor, thermoreceptor, and then your nociceptor. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. Now, now let's go here. Please turn your book on page 9.2, oh, page 239. This one are your types of uh, touch receptor. Okay. So basically, we've already learned um, the, um, the skin. Okay. Uh, you already learned the, uh, the parts of the hair and also the... Um, the epidermis, dermis, and also your subcutaneous and the likes. This time we will incorporate that anatomy here on this one for the types of your touch receptor. So first we have here what we call your Merkel's desk. As you can see here, disc, I'm sorry. Um, this one is to detect the light, uh, touch, and superficial pressure. As you can see here, they are usually here on this part. We also have here your hair follicle. This one, uh, this one will detect the light touch and slight bending of the hair. And here on the upper part here, just below your epidermis, this one, you can actually find your Meissner corpuscles. Okay, this one is the touch involved in two-point discrimination. And below your dermis, we have your... Um, uh, Ruffini and organ. This one detects your continuous touch or pressure and depression or stretch of the skin. Well, the last part here on the uh, almost near your subcutaneous area, that is what we call your position corpuscle. It detects the deep uh, cutaneous pressure, vibration, and your proprioception. So again, we have five types of your touch uh, receptors and each type they have you know um, distinct or somewhat similar with one another in terms of what they're going to detect from the stimuli okay let's move here pain i know everyone here already felt this one like you experience pain already right and pain as we as we Define here, it says that it is the unpleasant, perceptual, and emotional experience. Sometimes pain is not just the, the physical pain. Sometimes, you know, uh, the things that we are thinking, the things that we are feeling can actually bring pain to our system, to our body. Now let's move here. So we have your um, types of pain. Now, um, what I want you to remember here, if we say localize, it is merely more on the superficial pain. And if we say diffuse, or it is more on visceral. And again, if we say visceral, it has something to do with your internal organs. Okay, localized, superficial, um, diffuse, more of visceral. Okay, here in the localized, it's because 
um, this is due to the simultaneous stimulation of pain receptor and also your tactile receptor. And if you're going to categorize this one, it is like sharp, pricking, cutting pain. And more so it is on the rapid action potential. While you're diffuse, it is burning, aching pain. This one is on your slower action potential. Now let's move here. Okay. Anyone here already experienced receiving anesthesia? Yes, sir. Pagbubunit ng ipin. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can you share the experience, uh, Miss Paragas? Or yung process? Um, ano po, pag, para hindi po, ano, para, ma, para hindi mapil po yung sakit, kailangan po siyang turokan ng anesthesia. Okay. So, uh, usually, here, uh, if we're going to actually, um, how do you call this one, control the pain, so we have what we call your local anesthesia, and we also have your general anesthesia. Okay, so this uh, procedure is usually being done so that you cannot feel the pain in any procedure that they're going uh, to do to you. So as you can see here, uh, in this picture, this one, um, uh, I think it has something to do with the ingrown, and this one has something to do with uh, uh, maybe a uh, tooth extraction, okay, or anything uh, that will be uh, they they're going to do with the with the teeth, okay. And here, in local anesthesia, it's more on action potential suppressed from the pain receptor in the local areas. Kung ano lang yung area na uh, paggagawan ng procedure, yun lang yung lalagyan nila ng um, ng anesthesia, not the whole system of our body. Example is uh, tooth extraction, um, circumcision, debridma, or debridement, um, uh, ano ba? Op uh, yeah, uh, some kind of operation that is local or bedside. Uh, yung hindi na kailangan ng uh, operating room. Yung pwede siya sa bedside lang. So we uh yung pagtatap ng uh ng tag dito ng spinal cord natin para kukuha sila ng uh ng cerebrospinal fluid you know we are using um local anesthesia for that one okay while here we have your general anesthesia kung saan uh, the patient will be experiencing loss of consciousness so mawawalan ng mala yung pasyente Okay, so with this, ang nangyayari kasi dito is yung chemicals will affect your reticular formation. Ano ba itong ating tinatawag na reticular formation or RF in short? Uh, your RF, actually, tapos yung ating brainstem, uh, sila yung uh, may involvement dun sa normal neurological process natin. Okay, yung consciousness natin at saka yung ating nociception, yung perception natin sa pain. Okay, so ang nangyayari dyan, the RF is often um, called your activating system because ito yung nag increase ng ating arousal and again, yung ating consciousness. So yung effect nito is parang binablock niya yung, uh, yung, yung effect ng RF natin para yung pasyente is hindi siya alert or hindi siya gising during the operation. Again, uh, pain control, we have your local anesthesia. We also have your general anesthesia. Now, with this one, meron din naman tayong tinatawag na yung gate control theory. Uh, from the word itself, uh, parang fini-filter niya yung pain ng isang tao na, uh, like this one. So, ang nangyayari, parang hindi siya directly napupunta sa brain natin at hindi siya i-interpret as pain. So, parang ibablock muna siya or if filter That is your gate control theory. So this one actually, um, this theory suggests uh, that the spinal cord, yung spinal cord na then um, contains your neurological gate. That's either it will block the pain, uh, the pain signal, or it will allow them to continue to the brain, and it will um, it will be interpreted as pain. Parang ganito, kunwari, um, you are fixing something and then you um, you've ano bang term dito natamaan mo yung uh, yung thumb mo 
And then sometimes, yung uh, hindi, hindi ito masakit or hindi ito malala, yung ganun yung nasa uh, mentality natin. So what we are doing is like we are pressing yung uh, yung uh, malapit na area ng pain para sa atin is parang yung malesson at hindi natin ma-interpret as pain. So that is your, um, that is what we call your gate control theory. Now let's go here. Okay. Referred pain. Can someone help me read this one? Um, Julian, are you here? Julian Garcia. Yes, sir. Very good. Uh, what is referred pain? Referred pain. What is it? Originates in a region that is not source of pain stimulus. Felt when internal organs are damaged or inflamed. Sensory neurons from superficial area and neurons of source pain converge onto same ascending neurons of spinal cord. Okay, very good. So as you can see here, dito sa illustration natin. So um, sabi nga niya, di ba, yung it originates in a region that is not the source of pain stimulus. For example, here, you have liver and gallbladder play, uh, pain, just like this one. But your liver and gallbladder is not actually located here in your shoulders, but it radiates here. Usually, if you feel pain here, there's something wrong with your liver and gallbladder. And also, um, example is your lung and diaphragm. Uh, you will feel the pain here, but your actual lung and diagram is located here in your thoracic area. Okay? Um, the most common um, example of your report uh, referred pain is this, um, the heart. Okay? Um, example is if the patient is actually on your heart attack, uh, the pain receptor in the heart are being stimulated. And then, pag na-stimulate yung blood doon, kumbaga na-i-impede or uh, na-block or the blood flow is being disrupted, uh, the pain is not being felt here. Hindi nyo nararamdaman yung pain dito sa my cardiac area. But it is here. It is radiating to the left shoulder down to your arm. Kaya ganyan usually yung nararamdaman ng mga pasyente natin na inaatake. Hindi sa mismong heart nila yung masakit. Kung uh, bagkos doon sa may taas. Sa may left, uh, left area ng ating um, shoulder. So that is your referred pain. Now let's move here. We're going to talk now about your special senses. So we have your olfaction. And I know you already memorized or you already uh, learned your, uh, how do you call this one? Um, your olfaction, uh, olfactory um, cranial nerves. Okay. So you've already learned your cranial nerves. So this is one is, this one is already familiar with you. So olfaction, uh, what is olfaction all about? This is the sense of smell, kung paano, na tayo, uh, kung paano natin naaamoy ang isang tao, isang bagay, isang pagkain. It's because of our olfaction. It occurs in response to odorants. And then the receptor are uh, located here on this part, on this area, in your palate and also in your nasal cavity. Okay? So, Jan, nakalocate yung ating receptors for your um, olfaction. And it says here that we can actually detect 10,000 different smells. Okay? Moving further here, how, um, how does olfaction work? Okay. How about um, Stephanie? You hear Ms. Ripangkol? Um, wala. Uh, Clarice. Oh, there you go. Can you read what does olf uh, how does olfaction work? How does olfaction work? Number one. Nasal cavity contains a thin film or of mucus where odors became dissolved. Two. Olfactory neurons are located in mucus. Dendrites of olfactory neurons are enlarged and contain cilia. Three. Dendrites 
pick up or other the polarize and carry other to accents in olfactory bulb. Four, frontal and temporal lobes process other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's actually how our um how our olfaction work. So kanina I already presented to you kung saan area yung nasaan yung ating uh, tinatawag na uh, tinatawag na nas uh, receptor area tapos um, it has your mucus where the odors can actually um, dissolve and then ang nangyayari yung olfactory neurons natin na nandito is minumove siya ng um, ng cilia and then the dendrites will actually pick up the odor depolarize and carry the odor to your olfactory bulb which is your cranial nerve 1 and then yung frontal area natin and then yung temporal lobe natin iproprocess and iinterpret niya yung odor okay now let's move here uh, this one is just an illustration of your uh, olfactory epithelium and also your um, olfactory bulb dito now let's go how about the taste Okay, your taste uh, here, as you can see, this is the anatomy of our uh, of our tongue. So here we have your epiglottis. This is the root of the tongue. These are your palatine tonsils. We also have here your papillae. And if we will uh, look closely to your papillae, it looks like this. We have your epithelium, papilla, and also here, this one, this part that is your taste buds. And if you will look closer again to your taste, uh, taste buds, it will look like this. Okay, so you can see here, we have your supporting cell. Here is your taste cell. And here, actually, we have your taste hair and your taste pore. Okay, so um, this one, your, uh, your taste buds, they are the sensory structure that detect the taste of the food that we are about to ingest or the food that we are eating, okay? And this is located to the papillae on the tongue. Yung sinabi ko sa inyo kanina dito na area. Um, the hard palate and also your throat. Doon yung location niya. Now, inside of each uh, taste bud are actually 40 taste cells. And each taste cells has taste hairs. This one, yung pinakita ko sa inyo, and extend into your taste pore. Now let's go here. How does it work? Okay. How about, um, oh, there you go. Yes, Sophia. How does taste work? Taste buds pick up taste and send it to taste cells. Taste cells send taste to taste hairs. Taste hairs contain receptors that initiate an action potential which is carried to parietal lobe. Brain processes taste. Okay. So uh, as simple as that, kung uh, paano uh, guma gumagana yung ating, um, yung ating taste system using our tongue. So yung taste buds natin, pinipick up nyo yung taste, tapos sinesend nyo yung uh, sa taste cells. And then eventually... Um, process yan ng uh, taste hair. Tapos yung taste hair contains receptor that initiate the action potential, the AP, and then it will now move to your parietal lobe. At the same time, doon naman na i-interpret yung taste. Okay. Now let's move here. Okay. So as you can see in our illustration, uh, this is actually the um, types of the taste. So on this area, here, sa may dulo ng inyong dila, uh, you can touch that one or you, uh, uh, you can feel that one. So this one is a bit, this is where you can actually taste uh, the bitter part of the food. On the sides, here are sour. And then here, uh, salty, the tip of the tongue. Next is the sweet. And this one is your umami. Okay. So certain taste buds are more sensitive to certain tastes and taste is also linked to the smell. Kaya kanina, uh, dun sa illustration natin ng, uh, illustration natin kanina is yung 
kasama din siya doon sa uh, yung yung types of receptor, yung chemo receptor natin is under ng smell and under also ng taste. Okay? So, again, we have your types of taste. We have your sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and your umami. Now, let's move here. How about the vision? So, dito sa vision, uh, as you can see here, dito sa area na ito, ito yung ating upper eyelid. And then, meron din tayong lower eyelid dito. Okay? So, yung eyelids usually, uh, ito yung uh, tinaterm natin na accessory structure ng ating mata. Okay? Uh, primarily, they protect uh, from the foreign objects. Okay? And here, uh, they actually uh, being lubricated by blinking. So, kapag nagbiblink tayo, nalulubricate itong eyelids natin. And here, we have your eyebrow. So, this one is uh, also accessory. So, this one, it protects us from the sweat. Of course, coming from our head or our forehead. Kumbaga is, um, i, how do you call this one? Yung hindi siya directly na pupunta sa ating mata. But it will be uh, sap or it will be trapped first on your eyebrow. Okay? And also, it is our shade from the sun. Now, let's move here. So, this one, the, all things that you can see here, this one, this is what we call your, um, this is what we call your lacrimal apparatus. Itong area na ito. So, we have here your lacrimal gland, your lacrimal duct here. And then, we have here your lacrimal uh, canaliculi. Again, if we say canaliculi, it means they are little canals. Okay, so you can see here, these are your uh, little canals. And going here, this is the sa uh, lacrimal sac. And here is your nasal lacrimal duct. Okay, so uh, it's already nasal. It's because nasa may part na siya ng nose. And still, um, duct pa rin siya ng inyong lacrimal. Okay, and we also have here your conjunctiva. Uh, this one, uh, it is the thin uh, membrane that covers your inner surface of the eyelid. And sometimes familiar kayo dun sa term na conjunctivitis. Are you familiar with conjunctivitis? Or hindi nyo alam yung conjunctivitis? Anyone? Yes, Ryan. Infection of the eye. Bro. Infection of the eye. And how do you usually um how do you usually cut um describe conjunctivitis? Ano ito sa Tagalog? Oh yes, there you go. Someone is raising. Sore eyes. Very good. So usually uh ito yung um, yung pink na mata na sinasabi nila, or reddish uh, usually and that is the infection or inflammation of your conjunctiva now let's go here ito naman yung muscle area ng ating um, ng ating eye this is the extrinsic um, eye muscles so as you can see here bundles of muscles that is actually being used so that our eyes can actually move and let's go to the anatomy of your of your eye so meron tayong tinatawag dito na uh, retina my fibrous tunic and also yung vascular tunic okay so what i want you to remember if we say vascular uh, has something to do with your um your blood supply. Kumbaga, pag sinabing, oh, that is vascular area, kumbaga, yung meron siyang blood supply. Okay? So, your the, this one is hollow fluid filled um, yung circle or sphere, and we have uh, three uh, tunics and also divided into two chambers. So, let's first discuss here yung tinatawag natin na fibrous tunic. So, pag sinabi natin fibrous tunic, 
this is the outermost layer. Meron tayong sclera dito. Tapos meron din tayong cornea dito. Okay? So, pag sinabi nating sclera, pag napapansin niyo sa inyong mata, uh, if you will look in in front of the mirror, it is the white outer part of the eye. Okay? So, the primary function of this one, it will help maintain the eye's shape. And also, it provides the attachment sites and protects um, internal structures. Okay? So, ito yung ating sclera. Now, let's go here to your cornea. This one. Ito naman yung uh, transparent. Parang transparent uh, na, na part dyan sa inyong mata. Uh, this one will actually cover your iris. This one and also the pupil. Okay, this one, it allows the light to enter and focus the light. That is what you call your cornea. So these are your um, outer layer part. Now let's go here to your vascular. Pag sinabi naman nating vascular, it contains your blood supply. Okay, so we have here your, um, your choroid. We have your ciliary body, and we also have your uh, your iris. So this is your uh, middle layer of the eye, and kasama dyan yung ating pupil. Okay? So if we're going to talk here first, your uh, choroid, dito sa banda na ito, uh, this is actually yung uh, black part, uh, yung merong melanin. Uh, this is the black part. Uh, this one delivers the oxygen and also the um, the nutrients uh, to retina, uh, retina. Okay, while here, your ciliary body on this part, it helps hold the lens. Okay, the placement of the lens is being helped or being um, anchored here in your ciliary body. And we also have here, this one, ito yung lens, ito yung flexible disc, ito yung focuses light into your retina, retina. And your iris, this one, uh, ito yung colored part naman, yung iris, it surrounds and regulates the pupil. While your pupil, uh, it regulates the amount of light that is entering in our eyes, uh, lots of light. Kapag maraming light na pumapasok, ang nangyayari sa ating pupil, nagko-constrict. Kapag uh, little light naman, pag konti lang, nag-dilate yung ating pupils. Okay? Okay, ayan. Parang ito yung illustration natin dito. So as you can see here, uh, the pupil again, it regulates the amount of light entering um, in our eyes. And lots of light, letter A, this one, what is happening is nagkukonstrict, lumiliit yung ating pupil. Kapag, um, kapag light, a little light naman, nagdadilate yung ating pupil, lumalaki. Okay? And this one, this is an illustration of the lens and the ciliary body. Okay. Yung, again, yung ciliary body natin, ito, siya yung nag-hold doon sa ating, uh, sa ating lens in place. Para hindi siya ma-displace. That is your ciliary muscle. And the last part here, we have your nervous tunic. Here, we have your um, retina. This one, it covers uh, the posterior part of the eye and it contains two layers. Uh, we also have your um, your pigmented uh, retina. Ito yung outer layer naman niya na it keeps the light from uh, reflecting back dun sa ating eyes. Okay. I hope you're familiar with this one already. Ito yung tinatawag natin na, um, na rod tapos yung cones. Okay. Ito yung uh, sensory reti uh, retina natin. It contains your uh, photoreceptors. 
yung photoreceptors natin ay yung tinatawag natin na rod and cones. Okay, pag sinabi nating rod, um, this one, yung uh, blue colored, uh, this one is the photoreceptor that is sensitive to light. Okay? This one can actually function still if we are in dim area. That is the rod. While ito naman, yung uh, cones natin, photoreceptor provide color vision. Okay? And we have uh, three types of this one, the blue, the green, and also the red. Okay. How about this one? Your rhodopsin. Yung rhodopsin natin, ito yung uh, purple pigmentation. And this is photosensitive pigment in rod cell. So yung rhodopsin natin, meron siyang opsin and meron din siyang retinol. Okay? So yung perception natin dun sa light, uh, our perception to the light, it is possible. It's because of this. Okay? So when we are actually exposed sa light, yung retinol natin nag-change yan. This one, if we are exposed to light, you, our retinol changes. Um, and also, it will follow through doon sa rhodopsin natin. Uh, yung buong activity ng rhodopsin natin is also nag-change. Now, yung changes na ito, it will stimulate yung rod natin, which then results sa vision. Okay. So, this one. So, paano nangyayari ito? So, the light strikes yung rod cell natin, tapos yung uh, retinal changes shape. Also, your opsin will change in shape. And then, yung retinal dissociate with the opsin. It means maghihiwala yung, um, yung retinal tapos yung opsin natin. Now, yung change in your rhodopsin shape stimulates the response again in your rod cell that will result to the vision kung kaya tayo nakakakita sa maliwanag. Okay? How about this one? Okay. Anyone who has problem about this night blindness? Have you experienced this one? Boyfriend ko po. Okay. Uh, can you describe to us, uh, Sophia? Um, pag madilim po, kunyari naglalakad po kami sa labas, parang um, hindi daw po siya gaano ma nakakakita, parang nag adjust pa po ng sobrang tagal, tapos po yung parang pinapaliit niya po yung mata niya, parang ganun, para makakita. Mm. Okay, so usually parang um, most of the people who are experiencing this one is having same characteristics at the, uh, just like that one. But the night blindness here, this is your uh, vision impairment, also known as your um, ano na ito? Uh, night blindness. It is also known as your nyclatopia. Okay, this is also known as your nyclatopia. So this one, uh, they are experiencing poor vision kapag doon nga, kapag doon sa mga madidilim na area. And usually, this is associated because a person has vitamin A deficiency. Okay? So, kailangan um, i-boost natin um, yung ating um, health or yung ating katawan with vitamin A. Okay, and it says here that warning that cell phone use at night causes blindness. Okay, I, I ran here about about an article na nabasa ko kaninang umaga. Kaso hindi ko na mahanap yung link uh, na nag, kung paano nagkakos ng night blindness yung paggamit ng cell phone. Usually, it's because our room is very dark and then yung mag-open tayo ng phone tapos nakafocus yung eyes natin. Uh, doon sa ilaw nung, nung ating cell phone. I think something like that. Okay. Let's move here. Um, this one, uh, please uh, refer to your book. This is um, very easy to, to understand and follow. This is the effect of light in our rhodopsin. And also here. Okay, ito. 
uh, ito naman, this is the the rods and the cones as you can see here. Ayan. Kung nakikita ninyo dito, meron tayong cone cell, then meron tayong rod cell. So what is happening there, uh, magsa-sign up sila with bipolar cell of the retina here. Then after that, yung horizontal cell of the retina modify the output of your cones and also your rods. And the bipolar and horizontal cell synaps. Um, ito, horizontal and bipolar naman, magsa-synaps naman sila here sa may ganglion nerve natin. So once they sign up there, yung ganglion cell naman, ito, magkukonverge siya to form your optic nerve, which is here, okay? Which you already learn in your cranial nerves, yung optic natin. Okay, uh, more about our eyes. So we have here uh, your macula. Uh, yung macula here, if you're going to look closely to your eyes, this one is like the, um, the small spot near your retina and below that you can see your fovea centralis this one your fovea centralis it is the center of your macula so dito yung um this is like where the light is focused when looking directly with an object okay and it only have your cones and it has the ability to uh, discriminate fine objects or fine images. Dito sa my fovea centralis. And dito sa part naman na ito, this one, this is your optic disc. Okay, your optic disc, yung white spot media sa my macula natin. So as you can see here, merong uh, blood vessels. And here, dito yung tinatawag natin na blind spot dito sa area na ito. So my optic disc. Optic disc has something to do with your blind spot. Okay, how about the chambers of your eyes? Okay, this one. So meron tayong posterior, anterior, tapos meron din tayong vitreous chamber. Okay, kanina sinabi natin na it, it has also your chamber. So dito sa my anterior chamber natin, Kung nakikita nyo, it is located uh, between your cornea and also your lens. Okay, between your cornea and your lens, makikita nyo itong anterior chamber natin. This one is filled with your aqueous humor, yung watery part ng ating eye. Okay, this aqueous humor, it will help uh, maintain the pressure that we are feeling. Uh, refraction of the light and also provide nutrients sa ating inner surface ng eye. Now, as you can see here, punta lang tayo sa may bandang likod. This one, that is your posterior chamber. Okay? It also have your aqueous humor. So, watery din yung area na yan. Then, dun sa area naman na ito, yan, yung sa may vitreous, uh, vitreous chamber natin, meron din yung vitreous humor. This is uh, located naman na ito sa my retina region. So it has your field um, vitreous humor, ito, uh, jelly-like substance. Okay. And here, okay, anyone familiar with refraction and reflection or, I mean, I'm sorry, anyone familiar with concave and convex here? Familiar ba kayo sa term na yun? Anyone from the class? Yes po. Okay. Uh, oh, Sophia, can you distinguish or what you know about convex and concave? Sir, yun po yung pag-bend ng glass. Yung sa concave po yung pa, naka-inward po siya. Tapos po kapag convex po, naka-outward po yung curve niya. Okay. And usually, I think na pag aralan nyo to sa inyong physics or hindi ko alam kung may physics pa rin sa nursing ngayon. 
but during my time, meron. Grade 12 po, physics. Oh, yeah. At, oh, yeah, on your senior high. So here, pag sinabi natin concave, ito yung hollowed out or yung rounded inward. Okay, this one. Okay, it is easily remembered because yung surface niya is parang cave. Okay, parang it will cave in. Pag yung opposite naman niya is yung convex, yun, yun yung outward. Okay, uh, usually ginagamit yung concave uh, lens kapag meron kang, uh, if you are nearsighted. Kapag convex naman, you are farsighted. Okay, it has something to do with the light refraction or the bending of the light. And meron din tayong term dito na tinatawag na yung focal point. This is the point where the light rays converge and occurs in the anterior um, to ret retina and also obje object is inverted. Okay, you are focusing images on the retina is accommodation. Lens become less rounded and image can be focused on your retina. Enables eye to focus on images closer than 20 feet. Okay, as you can see here, Dito sa illustration natin, so itong letter A, um, pag titignan ninyo, yung tinitignan niya is yung distant, yung medyo malayo na object. So ang nangyayari dyan, yung lens natin is nag-flat para makapag-focus siya sa malayo na object. Compared here, in letter B, ang tinitignan lang natin is yung um, malapit. Um, yung near, uh, near vision. Ang nangyayari naman sa ating lens, nag-thicken. Okay? So again, if you are looking on an object that is far, our lens will flatten. If we're looking for the object that is near, our lens thickened. Okay? Is it clear? Yes, po. Okay. Now, let's go here. And we're going to learn your uh, neuronal pathway for the vision. So as you can see here, this area is your optic nerve. Okay. Yung optic nerve natin, ito yung uh, leaves eye and exits the orbit uh, through your um, optic foramen. If we say foramen, foramen again, it is your um, opening. And as you can see here, this one is your uh, optic chasm. So, kung mapapansin ninyo siya, uh, this is where it will connect the two optic nerve. So, kumbaga siya yung bridge area niya. And we also have here your optic track. Yung optic track naman, uh, ito yung uh, daanan ng inyong uh, ganglion axons. Okay, familiar with this disorder or eye defect? Are you familiar with this? Yes, po. Uh, do you know someone who has some who has this disorder? Best friend ko po. Mm. Okay, so this is what you call your um binoc uh, binocular diplopia. Okay, familiar with the term by uh, diplopia? Or no? Okay, so this one, yung eye defect na ito, ito yung tinatawag natin na double vision. Okay, bakit sila nagkakaroon ng double vision? It's because there is a misalignment of uh, the two eyes. And then yung muscles niya is actually very weak to move. That is why they're having um, this one, your double vision. Okay, and here we have your myopia. Kanina nasabi ko na ito yung tinatawag natin na nearsighted. So medical term for uh, nearsighted is your myopia. Kapag farsighted naman is your hyperopia. Okay. And next one here, we have your, okay. We have your uh, presbyopia, your astigmatism, and also glaucoma. Okay, here, I am very familiar with this one. It's because I also have astigmatism. 
um, what is happening here, let's go first with your press biopia. So yung press bio, uh, biopia, kung nakita nyo dyan, yung lens becomes less elastic. Kumbaga. Yan. So kung na-diagnose ka of having uh, press biopia, uh, you are required to have reading glasses. Okay? Here naman, yung astigmatism, ito yung, um, yung irregular curvature ng ating lens. Okay, as you can see here. And then, ganyan yung nangyayari. Nandito yung, uh, instead na dito yung focal point natin, is nag-iiba siya. So, um, here, ang required is yung glasses para makorek at makakita tayo properly. How about your glaucoma? So, kung nakikita ninyo dito, ayan, uh, meron ng um, changes dito sa ating optic nerve. Um, it means na maraming pressure na nafe-feel dito. So, this one, if not properly treated, it can actually lead to blindness. Okay, that is your glaucoma. Okay, how about here? Anong nakikita nyo sa monitor ninyo? What number? 74 po, that's fine. May nakakakita ba ng hindi 74 and 5? Ayun, may 24, si John Paul. John Paul, is this 24? Yes po, sir. 24. Okay. Anyone else? So 21 po. Uh, oh, this one is 7. 71. This one is 71. 71.5. 74.5. Okay. 21? My 21? Okay. 74. This one is actually your 74 and 5. So if you are having difficulty of uh, looking at this one, uh, you might have some sort of color blindness. Okay? So, this one is primarily sa males. Okay? Mas mataas yung rate ng males na nakakaroon ng uh, color blindness. So, absence or deficient of your cones. Again, sinabi natin kanina yung sa may rods and cones. Kapag cones, usually sa may colors na merong red, Blue and is it green? Yeah. So this one is 74 and this one is 5. Now let's move here. Okay. Uh, we have now your hearing and balance. Okay. So hearing and balance. Meron tayong uh, external, meron tayong middle ear, tapos meron din tayong inner ear na tinatawag. So, unahin natin dito yung external ear. You can feel that one. Um, you can feel it in your in your ears right now. This one is what we call your oracle. Dito sa may part ng ito ng inyong tenga, sinatawag natin yan na oracle. Okay? So, ito from the outside to the head of your eardrum. Yan yung external. Okay? Yung fleshy part na ito, that is the oracle. Here, itong area na ito, yung nililinisan natin um, not every day. It should not be not every day. That is what we call your external auditory um, or external um, acoustic canal, canal or miatus. Okay? So itong area na ito na nagli-lead sa ating eardrum. So this one, yung nakikita nyo dyan, that is your tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane is your eardrum. Okay? This one will actually separate your external to your middle ear. Yung tinatawag natin na eardrum. Now, let's move here sa may middle, uh, middle part naman ng ating uh, tenga. So, meron dyan nyo na makikita yung three smallest bones in our body. 
we call that here. This one is your malleus. This one here is your incus. And then this one is your stapes. Okay? And this one, pag sinabi natin malleus, sometimes it is termed as your hammer. Yung uh, incus, it is your anvil. Yung stapes naman, it is your stirrup. Okay? So, if we're going to look closer again here, itong malleus na ito, ito yung bone um, attachment nitong ating uh, tympanic membrane. Bone attachment ng ating eardrum. While your incus or your anvil, this is the bone that connect your malleus and your stapes. Okay? Itong stapes naman, or yung stirrup, this is the bone located sa may base nitong oval window natin. This one. Okay? Itong oval window, this one will separate your middle ear to your inner ear. Kung kanina, tympanic membrane separates your external to your middle ear, oval window here will separate middle ear to inner ear. Okay, and we also have here your uh, eustachian or auditory um, tube, this one. This is your eustachian or auditory. But, uh, isa lang yun, uh, isang, um, isa lang ang ibig sabihin nun. So this one will actually open into your pharynx, itong auditory tube natin. So this one is, uh, it will equalize yung air pressure between our uh, middle and inner, I mean between external and middle ear. Siya yung nag-equalize ng air pressure. That is your auditory tube or eustachian tube. Now let's go to your inner part. So my inner part naman, Meron tayong um, yung chambers na tinatawag natin. Uh, medyo sila na yung uh, field, uh, fluid field. Kung baga medyo sticky siya or basa. So we have here your uh, bony labyrinth na tinatawag na tunnels filled with fluid. And meron siyang uh, three regions. Yung cochlea, um, yung vestibule, tapos yung semi-circular canals this one okay and we also have your membranous uh, labyrinth this is inside your labyrinth and it is filled with your um endolymph okay punta tayo sa loob nito like this one so this one this is your perilymph perilymph and then yung gitnang area that is filled with your endolymph okay Yung endolymph, yung na, itong green area na ito, um, this is a clear fluid in your membranous labyrinth. And your perilymph, dito sa may taas, that is fluid filled between your membranous and bony labyrinth. Okay? And as you can see here, if we will go... Um, this one, yung parang, ano ba ito? Yung parang snail shape. That is what we call your cochlea. Uh, this is where the hearing takes place. Dito yung area na kung saan tayo nakakarinig. It is your cochlea. Okay? So we have here your scala vestibuli and then your scala um, tympani. And as you can see here, dito naman sa area na ito, may tinatag tayo na cochlear duct. And we have here your spiral um, organ. Dito sa may banda, yung spiral organ comprises your supporting cell and your hair cell. And we also have here your um, uh, tectorial membrane. And vestibular membrane here. And your basilar membrane. Okay. Uh, this one, you can actually read uh, this one in your 
in your book or on how are we uh, how our hearing area works or how we usually hear um, things so this one the sound will actually travel in waves uh, through the air and it will funnel into our air auricle and then after the one yung auricle natin uh, through yung external auditory meatus or external auditory um, canal papasok siya sa may ating tympanic membrane o yung eardrums natin ngayon yung eardrums your tympanic membrane will vibrate and the sound will amplify in your smallest bones it will amplify to your malleus to your incus stapes which now transmit sa my oval window yung oval window natin again yun yung nagsa separate ng middle sa my inner now yung oval window produces waves in your perilymph of your cochlea cochlea yun yung snail shape now yung vibration of perilymph uh, will cause your vestibular membrane and indolent to vibrate. Tapos yung indolent cause displacement of your basilar membrane and movement of uh, membrane is detected by the hairs, yung hair doon sa my spiral organ. Tapos yung hair cells become bent and cause action potential. And doon na tayo nakaka-interpret nung ating naririnig. Okay, we have here the last part, which is your balance. Okay, or the equilibrium. So what I want you to remember here is yung, um, yung static at saka yung dynamic equilibrium. Pag sinabi natin static, it is always associated with your vestibule. Pag dynamic naman, it is in your semi-circular canal. Okay? Pag static, it has to do with our position or um, straight line changes. Kapag naka-straight line lang tayo, pag titingin tayo upside down or iti-tilt natin yung face natin to the left or we are slowing down. That is static equilibrium. Yung dynamic equilibrium naman has to do with the angular, um, angular acceleration. Ito yung kapag nag spin tayo, nakasakay sa roller coaster or boat rides. That is your dynamic um, equilibrium. Now here, uh, we have your vestibule kanina. Uh, nabanggit ko ito. And meron din tayong uh, maculae, yung red. And then yung otolites. Yung otolites here, kung nakikita nyo para siyang bato, uh, your otolites are actually your ear stones. Tinatawag natin na ear stones. That is your otolite. So yung vestibule, ito yung nasa inner ear natin. And it contains your otricle and your saccule here. This one. So your maculae or macula, dito, it specializes uh, patches ito of the epithelium in your auricle and in your saccule. Okay, and they contain your hair cells. Um, yes, Miss Robosa. Oh, baka na pindot. Okay, let's go back here. So again, yung macula natin, um, they contain your, uh, their patches ng ating oracle and uh, your saccule, and they contain your hair cells. Well, here, yung otolites natin, again, yung tinatawag natin na uh, ear stones. Okay. Ito yung um, gelatinous substance that moves in response sa gravity. Okay, and it attached to hair cell microvilli, which initiate your action potential. Okay, last one here, uh, second to the last here. Ito yung tinatawag natin na, pag itong letter A, ito yung naka-upright position tayo, yung macula ng ating katawan is not moving. Okay, if it's in upright position, the macula here, as you can see, 
in the illustration, it's not moving. However, uh, in letter B, this one, the position, uh, the position of the head changes, nagbend over siya, uh, which actually correspond to the direction of gravity, ito yung nangyayari, nagmumove. Okay? And here, you have your uh, semicircular canals. Yung semicircular canal natin, these are uh, for your dynamic equilibrium. And meron siyang uh, tatlo each ear. So meron tayong anim. So uh, this one, your semicircular canal, it will detect yung movement natin in any direction. And we have here your ampullae. Yung ampullae naman sa ating ears, uh, this is the base of your uh, semicircular canal. And with that, meron tayong tinatawag na crista ampullaris. Uh, crista ampullaris is um, within your ampullae. And just like this one, ito, nakikita ninyong ganyan. Um, your uh, copula, itong copula naman, ito yung gelatinous mass, contains microvilli. And this one, para saan ba yung ating um, crista ampullaris? Um, if we do movement, just like here, yung uh, magsasomersault or nasa balance beam, uh, yung crista ampullaris, um, it is located again in your semicircular canal of the inner ear. And the function of this one is to sense angular acceleration and uh, deceleration, as you can see here in this illustration. So, nagmumove ito. Uh, depende kung saan angle or kung ano yung movement na gagawin natin. Okay? Okay, now that is actually all about your um, special senses ng ating 